Now, this this comment that we have right now, Boba will be Mandalore just like he was in Legends from John. Um, I actually wanted to talk about this so bad, and I've been waiting to talk about this for so long because I really do feel like, okay, I'm just going to go with my theory, guys. So just go with me on this train of thought for a little bit here. I got to tell a little backstory, everything, because it is a Legends comic uh, by Dark Horse. It's uh, Jingle Fett Open Seasons. If you haven't read it, Go to Comicology and purchase it. It's like four episodes worth the read, uh, or excuse me, four uh, com uh, comic book series. But it's it is worth the read. It's all legends. But here's the thing: as you read through these comics, you learn about Django and how his father was the protector, the journeyman protector of Concord Dawn. Right, Django's father was. And Vizsla started this war in the Mandalorians, the Mandalorian Civil War, where he was going after the true Mandalorians, right? Who was uh, Jaster Miril. So Jaster Miril is the guy, you know, the emblem you see on Boba's chest, the, the signet. That's, that's his house or his clan, right? Um, the Mythosaur? No, the actual, um, like... It looks like an olive branch almost. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Oh, on his that, crest. Okay. Not, yeah, not his, his sigil. Not his, his sigil. Yeah. It's like his his clan, his house, basically. Um, the great mythosaur is on his other shoulder, right? Yeah. So uh, in this comic, it shows how Django, uh, his father, uh, got met by Vizsla and these, like, you know, Death Watch Mandalorians and basically took his father captive and his mother captive because they wanted to know where Jaster was end up killing his father as he gets away he runs into jaster jaster takes him in and he starts to fight with him he even fights against um Vizsla when he's a young age and shoots him in the head and thinks he killed him he didn't but that kind of was the thought the end of the mandalorian civil war you had the true mandalorians who were basically just mandalorians that weren't as strict as death watch right they were more of the bounty hunter type mandalorians that just kind of making their way through the galaxy, taking jobs, protecting their own kind of a deal. Uh, kind of like you see almost Din Djarin is right now. You know, it's a little twist. But um, what it happens eventually is Django learns all these years how to fight from Jaster. He becomes an excellent Mandalorian. He basically is his second in command. He takes on this, uh, they take on this bounty from this governor to go and destroy these people that are killing like women and children and things like that. Turns out that Vizsla like went in coup with this governor and set them up to have an ambush. They ambushed Jaster and Boba and Django. They killed Jaster, who's Mandalore, basically. They kill him. And Django is almost killed, right? He's they he's almost killed in this betrayal as well because they call in the Jedi saying, Hey, these Mandalorians are killing innocent women and children. And so these Jedi come in to take out Jaster and, and Django and all the other Mandalorians. And who's leading them other than Count Dooku? So this is where Dooku actually meets Django. Django goes back to the camp, tries to get there as quick as he can once he found out they were betrayed. Ends up killing like five Jedi with his bare hands, right? Um, and then gets ca taken captive by the governor and sold, sold into slavery. He eventually gets out when pirates attack the ship. And he goes to take his Mandalorian armor back from the governor who stole it from him, which is a cool callback because you notice in Clone Wars, it talks about how he stole his armor and they don't know how he got it. Well, that's just a lie from Death Watch and the Vizsla's House of Vizsla and all that, right? Trying to discredit Django from being a Mandalorian. Toward the end, he ends up basically uh, killing Vizsla in this big fight. And at the very end of the comic, he's sitting down with Dooku talking about being the clone template and why he thinks he could be the clone template. And, you know, because of what he saw. Um, and then he's kind of, Dooku's kind of shocked because he's like, I didn't think you as a sentimental kind of guy wanting a son, you know, because he told him he wanted a clone template. He goes, I don't want a son. I want an apprentice who will take on the legacy of Jaster Miro. And so I really do think that Filoni gave us a hint when the armorer said, hey, in Legends, the great mythosaur will rise and help establish a new Mandalorian era. So I really think the great mythosaur on Boba's shoulder, he's going to kind of rise up and take that legacy of Jaster Miril and help like Din 
become the true leader of the Mandalorians. He's not going to be the leader of the Mandalore. He's not going to be Mandalore. I think he definitely wants to set up his own house and be reestablished with the Mandalorians, but I don't think he's going to be the Mandalore. I think he's going to have Din be the Mandalore. He's just going to be the great Mythosaur rising. 